Hi everyone. Today, let's dive into the world of intermittent fasting, a revolutionary approach to serious weight loss. Intermittent fasting is not just a diet trend, it's a scientifically backed practice with numerous fascinating benefits. One of the most appealing aspects of intermittent fasting, it's remarkably cost effective. Indeed, it's free and you'll find yourself saving money. Its simplicity is striking. It doesn't demand effort. Rather, it involves the strategic avoidance of food. Fasting liberates your schedule, freeing you from the kitchen and giving you back countless hours. Fasting is a gateway to longevity, enhanced brain function, improved mood, and a reduced risk of numerous health conditions. This newfound time will encourage you to explore new hobbies or interests. With the money saved from reduced food expenses, you'll find yourself pondering enjoyable ways to invest or spend it. That's a delightful dilemma to have. Intermittent fasting is not a diet. It's a pattern of eating and not eating. It's putting you in the driver's seat of when you tell your body it can eat and when it needs to avoid eating. I mean, if you think about it, the worst question to ask your body is, hmm, what is my body in the mood for today? You're gonna get an insane answer. In fact, if I ask that question right now, I'd probably get the answer, a donut and maybe some M&M's potato chips. So many times you'll get a very unhealthy answer if you ask your body what it's in the mood for. This especially applies to when your blood sugars are a problem because if your blood sugars are too low or too high, you're going to get an insane answer. So it's kind of like you being in the backseat of a car and having some insane driver drive you around. This is not a good situation because you're no longer in control. And unfortunately, food has been controlling you your entire life. In fact, our whole existence revolves around food. So doing intermittent fasting starts to put you in control over this insanity, which is a very powerful thing for you personally with your willpower, with your self-discipline, and especially for your health. The one thing that you need to know about intermittent fasting is that every time you eat, you trigger insulin. So insulin not only increases with sugar and carbs, but also from just eating in general. So the less frequent you eat, the less insulin you're gonna trigger and the more benefits you're going to have. Our bodies have evolved over a very long period of time to not eating because long ago food wasn't very available. So our bodies have adapted and developed all sorts of very amazing genetics for surviving without food. And when I'm talking about survival, I'm talking about those genes that are survival genes, repair genes, disease genes, turning off, like for example, cancer turns off when you fast. So all sorts of fascinating survival things related to your DNA get activated when you start fasting. So I'm going to show you exactly how to apply this right now. Okay, so you take an average person who's doing three meals with snacks in between meals. So they're doing three meals and three snacks, like six meals. They're getting a lot of spikes of insulin through the day and their body is suffering immensely from this. So the first thing to do is to stop snacking. That's step number one. So then you just have three meals a day. And so then you do that until you're comfortable. And then the next stage is to skip your breakfast, that first meal. So in other words, when you wake up in the morning, because you're not snacking, you're not really going to be hungry, especially if you're doing keto. But this video is not necessarily on keto. It's just about the fasting pattern and how to get into this at a nice gradual level. So let the lack of appetite in the morning dictate whether you eat or not, because the underlying principle is don't eat unless you're hungry. So you wake up, you're not hungry, don't eat, go as long as you can until your first meal. Okay, so you work up to your first meal being let's say at noon, right, lunchtime. So let's say you're eating at 12 and six, that gives you 18 hours of fasting, okay? You have this window of eating, which is six hours, and then you have 18 hours of fasting. Now, to add a little help to the situation, if you add more fat at the end of the meal, whether it's avocado and for the nuts, like macadamia nuts or pecans or any type of fat, that will allow you to fast longer and get into the next stages easier. As a side note, there's a lot of other things we can do to improve this situation, especially with blood sugars as well. For example, if you eat a big salad as the first thing you eat in your meal, and you put olive oil dressing on it, extra virgin olive oil, and you put some balsamic vinaigrette or even apple cider vinegar on that salad, you're gonna create a really cool effect with your blood sugars. Okay, number one, you're eating a lot of fiber. Fiber buffers insulin. Fiber is the only carbohydrate that won't trigger insulin. 
The oil in the extra virgin olive oil is also another thing that really won't trigger insulin that much, if at all. And the oil helps you extract some of the fat soluble nutrients from that salad. And I'm talking about like the phytonutrients, which are fat soluble. So you get the benefit of that. Vinegar, whether you do alpacita vinegar or balsamic vinaigrette, gives you a very potent anti-diabetic effect because it helps you lower blood sugars as well as insulin. And this is why I recommend the Alpachita vinegar like a tablespoon in some water a few times a day. That alone will greatly help you. And then if you add some cinnamon to your diet, like whether it's in that drink or in something else, cinnamon is another potent thing to help your blood sugars. And then of course, vitamin D is another thing you can add to this mix and just get more sun that will help you. Okay, so you're at the stage where you're eating two meals a day, right? Six hour window. Now, ideally, you wouldn't want to snack within that window, but if you had to, that would be the time to snack, not in the fasting window, because we want that 18 hours of just pure fasting. So you're going to do this for a period of time until you get comfortable, okay, as you get used to it. Then you want to take it to the next step, especially if you want to lose more weight. Okay, what we want to do is we want to take those two meals and get them closer together, like within a four hour period, so let's say, for example, you get up in the morning, you fast all the way to noon, you're still not hungry, you keep going, and then you fast until two o'clock. You have your first meal and your second meal at six. So now we have a four hour eating window and a 20 hour fasting window, which is gonna be even better, and you're gonna see more fat loss. So you're going to do that for a couple weeks until you feel comfortable, and then the next phase, and this is the icing on the cake. I'm sorry, I don't want to tempt you with cake, but this is called OMAD, one meal a day. So now what's happening is we collapse these two meals together as one. One large meal, make sure it's nutrient dense and it's healthy, and that's all you're gonna eat. Now, of course, you're not gonna be able to eat the same calories as you would when you're doing two meals, but the benefit of this is not really that you lowered your calories, it's the fact that you're fasting for 23 hours, okay? that's gonna produce even greater benefits for your immune system, for your brain, for your anti-aging, for your repair. Now, recently I kind of stumbled on something that is uh, another tweak to this OMAD plan, okay? But you might wanna consider it's just a slight change that could make a big difference with your sleep and even greater improvement in your blood sugars and insulin and insulin resistance, okay? And that would be have that last meal no later than 3 p.m. So it's midday because the later that you eat, apparently that can interfere with your sleep cycles and that can stir up certain genes that are related to food and that can inhibit your sleep. So you might wanna just try this, eat a little bit sooner, make sure it's a big meal right in the middle of the day, like maybe two or three and see if you don't sleep a lot better. I'm doing that right now and I'm finding I'm sleeping much better, which is then gonna help you lose even more weight because the better the sleep you have, the less cortisol, the more growth hormone, the more fat burning, the more benefits with a lot of things, like your energy will be improved. Now there's a lot of other things we can do to improve your results, like we can add exercise. We can also add the healthy version of the ketogenic diet, which I promote, which just is higher quality ingredients, and more nutrients in that meal. So there's many things you can add to this mix. Now the last phase of fasting is really interjecting some periodic prolonged fasting episodes. So you can add in like once a week or once every two weeks, a 48 hour fast or even a 72 hour fast. It's a three day or even 120 hour fast, which is a five day fast, which could be unbelievable for your immune system. And especially if you wanted to prevent cancer because as soon as you start fasting for long periods of time, you are literally destroying cancer in your body. So I just wanted to give you the bird's eye view of how intermittent fasting can be started at the very beginning and gradually improving your fasting to the point where you're really doing it for some serious weight loss and health benefits. So really the only thing to do now is to just start, don't think about it. Don't wait for the medical profession to finally agree that this is the best thing for your health because that's not gonna happen. It's only when you yourself try this and you know the power of intermittent fasting and what it can do for your health. 
Intermittent fasting transcends mere weight loss. Its core aim is to usher you into a state of optimal health. Lose 50 pounds in just six months by faithfully adhering to the steps of intermittent fasting. Then circle back and share your journey here. I eagerly await your feedback after navigating the challenging yet rewarding journey of intermittent fasting. Your insights are invaluable to us.